We've been speaking about Virgil a lot lately on here, isn't it? Like, it's been like three days a week, man. I need to kind of calm down with the fucking Virgil commentary. But I thought this was really funny. Um, she made this entire video talking about how Virgil is not is like basically an enemy of black people. He's not an ally. There's loads of real interesting work speaker hey, being guys, exposed to. Hold on, let me pause this. Someone, it's just loads of really cool, interesting work speaker I've been, I've been kind of, um, I, I've come into contact with ever since I've kind of been following this story regarding Virgil's supposed lack of diversity. And I thought it was very, very interesting. Now, again, I'm not too sure where it's, where it's all coming from. I'm not sure if it's because it's a reaction to to what Kanye has been doing and because Virgil is basically, you know, very close associated with Kanye kind of got his come up, his success is kind of, you know, primarily based on those two guys coming up and doing what they did with uh, Kanye's career and the other stuff that came after it. I'm not sure if it's because of that. I'm not sure it's because of the fact that he doesn't up again, like I said in the previous podcast is because he doesn't really, you know, navigate himself. He's not really in black space, the common blank space. I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't go to rock nation brunch and stuff. He's not at, I don't know, Governor's Ball. Maybe, I don't know if it's, that has to do with it, but it's just seems strange that he was the one they went to go and attack. Because it's, because anyway, because if, you, if you're aware or if you're in, or if you're, or if you're aware of what's going on in current society with cancel culture, you would know that there's certain patterns of how they attack, right? They choose certain people and they just, you know, they don't stop until the person's kind of bleeding out. Um, and then they kind of reset and then go for somebody else. But they usually use the usually for the purpose of setting an example for others not to fall out of line or to kind of adhere to what they want. That's why some people um, would argue that you should never apologize. You should never explain yourself because they they're never gonna. It's never gonna be enough. They're just gonna keep coming and coming and coming and coming. So I don't know if sure exactly what the reason is again, but you know that that he put up a story an Instagram story of. Have him having a really late Christmas party for his team. He's a white team based in Milan. I'm sure some of the new guys group people were there too. So all the family love doing their own thing, celebrating everyone in there, showing them love on Instagram stories, tagging a couple people, um, giving them loads of love, saying that they're best design, the most talented kids ever worked with. And somehow people saw that one thing that he did, that one occasion, the one occasion. This whole time he's been designing clothes. He's been front row. He's been standing next to this model, standing next to that model. The one time. He, he, he posted this on his Instagram story. They started to label him as, you know, an Uncle Tom or somebody that doesn't hire black people. And of course, you know, if you know anything about Virgil, you know, it's quite quite the contrary. So um, this video from a young lady who kind of, you know, went on a bit of a uh, Black Lives Matter rant regarding it was quite hilarious, really. And again, but I like listening to sort of stuff because it kind of gives you a window into what the other side thinks, right? The kind of fanatical um, absolutist who kind of, you know, decide to become the moral or societal police for everyone right they want everyone to do to do things the way they they want it to be done as opposed to just looking at the way the world is knowing that there might be some fucked up characters and then trying to better it by doing something themselves that's how you that's how it should be right but it's not unfortunately so let's see what this lady has to say Hey you guys, someone sent me this story regarding fashion designer Virgil Abloh and he posted this very controversial picture of his staff or his fashion brand Off-White and a lot of people were side Why is that controversial? That's the people that work for your company, that's your staff members, why is that controversial? Okay, it's controversial because they're all white. Cool, 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 cool. So what? So what? So what? There's a lot of context to it. There's a lot of nuance to it. But even explaining it seems a little bit redundant because you're never going to never gonna appease people that have that kind of thinking. But let's take a stab at the duck for it, right? Let's assume Milan isn't as racially diverse as most places. Let's assume there's most cities in the world. Let's, cause, you, know, you only have to look at, I don't know, do you know a football player called Moses Keane? Cool. Plays one of the biggest, one of the biggest clubs in Italy, if not in Europe, Juventus cool one of their star prospects cool comes up in the youth rank cool born in it born in italy cool from ivorian parents cool but it's essentially italian to the fucking core cool he probably hasn't even been back to ivory coast unless unless he goes back there with his family but for the most part you know second generation immigrants your parents want you to fucking um assimilate soak in the culture and you don't even speak english at home or whatever uh, you don't speak your mother tongue language at home for the most that's how it usually is for the most because yeah? they really want to give you every opportunity for you to succeed so you do that. You're Moses Keen, you're smashing it, you're 18, 19, you're coming up through the youth ranks and suddenly you burst through the scenes, you take the mantle as the main guy in the event side, struggling for goals up front, you, from the most experienced, you know, maybe you take a, you take the slot of an experienced striker in Mandzukic and you start firing in the goals, helping out Cristiano Ronaldo, one of your marquee signings. And guess what happens? 
because you play so well and because you're smashing teams and you're young and you're quick and you're fast and you're You've got great finishing ability. Opposing fans start making monkey noise in the stadiums. This is Italy. Italy, this is happening. In 2019, right? One of their star players is getting booed, is getting made monkey noises of, they're chucking bananas on the pitch, whatever it may be, like insulting him on social media. This is happening in Italy now, right? So this place we're talking about, Italy, maybe isn't the most, you know, woke place in the world, but they're getting there, right? Every place has their problems, you know, but again, it's the, it's the idea that somehow we know better right and we're going to try and force these kind of you know um what are they called blah, 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 these trendy new ways of doing things in other places that are probably not ready for it just yet they have a lot more they have more italy has a lot of other things to get um to sort out and figure out before they address systemic racism before they address um patriarchy before they address overt misogyny they have loads of other issues they have to fucking those are pretty big issues they have to address before they get to you know ensuring that a fashion company based in milan is going to somehow argue is going to you know make sure they hire a particular quota of, of people in their in their um in their companies isn't there an issue isn't it isn't it hasn't it been said for most part in um in fashion circles that milan fashion week is one of the bore is one of the most boring fashion weeks out there don't people say that a lot don't a lot of fashion editors bemoan the lack of talent coming out of Milan? Why is that? Why do you think that is? Why do you think the most talented kids in Milan are moving to other countries to maybe get a little bit more culturally diverse? Because there's nothing there. So the the kids that are left there, it's no it's not it's no um it's no um it's no shock that they'll look a certain way. It's no shock they'll come from a certain background. And also it's Milan. The heartbeat of fashion, or well, well, for them anyway, it's the heartbeat of fashion, right? That's where fashion lives for them. There's maybe plants and manufacturing places there that have been there for years, decades, right? Wouldn't it be a certain type of person that would work in those kind of places, right? That maybe been again, fashion's a small place that get passed around from company to company that works around in different sort of industries. Like they think this isn't controversial. Everything has its context. Now, if this was LA, maybe if this was New York. Maybe you have an issue. But again, it's there is no issue to it. If this my um why am I not allowed to hire or want to hire? Do I have to hire again, even speaking as a as a as a black man myself, speaking as a creative myself, right? Again, I'm not, not gonna flip in, in um put myself under a collective banner of like black speak for all black men, but you know, speaking of somebody who comes from a background that isn't indigenous to the country I live in, I'm not necessarily only gonna hire people that look like me. I'm just gonna hire the best person for the job. I might have a preconition a of looking out for people that look like me, but they still have to be able to do the job. That's that's all you can hope to do. Because at the end of the day, who's going to suffer when this business doesn't work out because you decided to hire your friends, people who look like you, people who support the same football team as you, people who wake up the same time as you? What's going to end up happening? Your business ain't going to be able to run anymore. There's like no one that's black in the picture at all. It was just completely white. And this person sent me more information on him and everything makes sense now for why his staff is completely white. So if you're interested in learning why he has no black fashion designers on his team, please stay tuned for the rest of this video. Shakeblacklove.com Makes sense though, isn't it, right? This person is setting up the, the platform or setting up the uh, argument that Virgil Abloh doesn't want to hire black people. He's only selling himself white people because he's selling out his Uncle Tom. And then, you know, the person that's saying this, again, you have to put into the context. You can't get too upset at people how, with the point of view they have because, you know, she's then promoting or is backed by a, um, a dating uh, company that's specifically aimed at in promoting the idea of black love. Log into straight black love. That's <laughs> interesting, right? <laughs> they had to stipulate that, didn't they? <laughs> Come on, man. You always like it. <laughs> Some people are fucking nuts. <laughs> Honestly, imagine someone telling you how to run your company, who you should hire. Imagine that being a thing. Imagine if you're... I'm arguing it from that point, right? Imagine if somebody's telling a Virgil to do that. Somebody that purposely surrounds them is this... <laughs> some people would argue, yeah? Some people, again, I don't argue, but some people could argue that Virgil's a clout chaser. Some people could say that, right, about Virgil. Let's say he latches onto kids and gets them in to kind of soak up their wave or gives them a platform so you can kind of, you know, get them on get them under his wing so they can help his brand become bigger. Some people would argue that, right? If that was true, if that rumor was true, if people, if what people said about him was true in the comments, oh, he's, he's kind of stealing kids' talents and stealing their wave and getting a monster that he can steal their thing. Cool. Let's say that's true. 
what do you think these kids are going to look like? Do you think he's going to be, you think he's going to, do you think if he's out there trying to get kids that are doing cool things on the internet to stand next to him so he can look cool, do you think he's going to be picky enough to say, I only want white boys doing this? He's not Gosha, bruv. You know what I mean? We've got evidence on Gosha. We know what Gosha likes. This isn't a Gosha argument. This is somebody who's making cool stuff and is seeing cool kids out there wearing it. The kids who are, num- who are again, reminder, the kids who are actually going to wear the items, not fashion critics or people who write op-eds on, 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 on certain websites. The kids are actually going to buy the stuff. That's really important to them, to see him standing next to a John Ross, a Ian Connor, all these sort of kids. It's important. They want to see that. So do you think he's then going to go a step further and say, okay, I only want a certain colour, a certain race, certain background. It's like, come on, man, come on. Straight back, love. Get out of here, man. This lady. Okay, let's go back. Let's go. Let's start here. What's your saying? Be sure to go and support the online store as well as the physical store today. Virtual Abel is from Rockford, Illinois, and he got his start in the fashion industry after he did a successful internship at Fendi in 2009 alongside Kanye West. In 2013, Black person. this inspired him to go on to launch his own fashion label named Off White. And in 2018, he was hired. When she's saying, a- when she's um, when she's saying the phrase Off White. You think she's saying it on purpose because she she thinks the phrase off white means he's trying to be white. Do you think so? That that's he was right regards of as off white. Because I get I don't know I get a hint that she's really rubbing that in white. What? <laughs> so if you're so what? I wonder if if there's are there? Is, do you think some work black people go as far as doing the thing of like you know you can't even wear white clothes? Is that a thing? Or you can't listen to white music? Is that a thing? Do you think they go that far? If they do, that is wacko territory, man. That's like that's like as that's as bad as um Mexicans are coming over our wall to come and you know rape and kill our teenage girls and shit, right? That's that kind of level of fucking his hysteria. That is nuts. I, I, again, I'm not sure if that's the thing. I'm not sure if that's the case, but if if you can't even wear white jeans, being a black dude in front of some woke black people or at an historically black college because you might get called out for being a puppet, sheesh. artistic director for their menswear line. Now, I personally heard of Virgil Abloh because obviously I watch a lot of tennis and I saw some of Serena's outfits and I noticed that on her outfits they always had these quotation marks. And when I researched further into that, I realized he was the one that was behind it, that was designing some of her outfits. And last year he had a bit of controversy alongside of Serena where so again, was the reason uh, behind this mess. So again, this is interesting, right? Um... Let me get that. So the interesting thing about this is that she's laid the platform, right? Okay, let me take this picture off of me on the screen. She's laid the platform quite well for essentially fighting his case, right? She's given him a background. He came up with Kanye, interning at Fendi. The front row pictures he posted, surrounded by people of color, you know, some friends, some not, adjacent friends. Self-taught, runway, probably the runway picture that she posted, you know, those, look, look, look at that front row. It did, looked completely different to a front row you might see of Chloe or Prada or whatever other company out there. Cool, no problem. But she doesn't credit him with that. Then she mentioned that she watches a lot of tennis, right? And one of the, you know, one of the biggest tennis stars out there, Serena Williams, you know, outfits are designed by Virgil Abloh. Again, but still he's not, he's not, he's not, a, he's not an ally. And then on top of it, she does, he designs the, um, he helps creative direct the front cover of GQ with Serena Williams on the front of it wearing Again, maybe a couple of off-white pieces and a Chanel belt. I'm not sure if they were able to... They're not be able to do that joining it together, are they, really? Usually on most shoots, if you wear one brand, you have to wear the whole look. They won't let you wear it together. I'm not sure. But however, let's say, let's say he just he took the pictures and maybe he created direct to the, the front cover. He then crosses out the man, man of the year and puts woman of the year in quotation marks. All these things are would be points in the virtual cap in the virtual pocket right I'm like look look what i'm doing for black culture again it's not it's not that kind of conversation that's not something that i'd ever want to promote but for somebody that has that kind of warped thinking that should be that should hold him in good graces shouldn't it It should be like oh yeah look you're doing some good stuff for us right but no because he because he crossed out men and put women in quotation marks again his kind of trademark he's now what he's now she's trying to say that he's questioning her um womanhood because supposedly there's a conversation in the US, I don't know where, I've not heard it myself, that supposedly uh, people say Serena Williams is like a man. She doesn't look like a woman. Uh, it's unfair or something like that. that or that she's playing. I don't know, whatever conversation it may be that she's, inv- she's invented in her head. 
what I thought was funny or interesting or cool about the quotation mark with woman on it was that if you looked at the news prior to it happening, I think even prior to her pregnancy, Serena's pregnancy, there was a conversation in tennis world, I think with the dude that's always shouting and he made a comment, a quite flippant comment that, you know, um, a number 2000 or 1200 seed would beat uh, the top 10 would be a top 10, 10 female tennis star easily, right? It's a completely different sport. You know, we had different power, different whatever. And I think Serena Williams quite graciously agreed with it, but also kind of poked some fun back at it, right? It was a kind of a back and forth thing happening in the tennis world. You know, and again, that's an argument for another another day, but that was a thing that was going on in tennis, right? A really prominent male tennis star said that, you know, women aren't as good as they think they are because, you know, anyone for anyone ranked 200 below could be the, the number 10 or number, number one women's person easily with their hands tied behind their back. You know, and kind of Virgil kind of played on this sort of thing, crossing that man of the year and putting women. I thought that's quite cool, right? It's part of the thing he does. He's writing on the cover. It, it, they printed it that way too. It looks quite cool. But instead, look at how she interprets it. Magazine cover for GQ where it showed Serena in the magazine and she had on this leotard. And on one side of the magazine, they put in quotations, woman. When I found out he was behind it, I was like, what black man in his right mind would even insinuate that knowing all the transgender allegations that are out here about Serena and how they're always trying to make black women in the face of masculinity? Like, I'm. Oh, wait, what should. Again, absolutes. These are this thing. They always talk in absolutes. All of these allegations out there. Where are these allegations? I've not seen them. I've not seen his allegations. I've seen some commentary, again, mostly from work Twitter people trying to say that, you know, Serena's as good as the women, which, you know, is probably not true. Um, because you can, because again, it's sport, right? Sport isn't uh, uh, social sciences. You can, you can just, you can, social sciences. But anyway, with sport, you can basically, you can, you can, you can test it out, your hypothesis. You can get the 10 best women. You can get men ranked 200 and below, put them head to head three sets and see who wins most likely the guys will win right that's just the, uh, you can just prove it straight away but there's a lot of conversation about that mostly about oh, how good she is compared to women which compared to men which doesn't you know needs to happen she's a fucking legend in tennis regardless right you don't even need to compare it to men to say she's a legend in tennis not female tennis in tennis in general right but instead you want to again pick apart the argument attribute something to it that hasn't been attributed make up these absolute claims that everyone has to be aware of these allegations maybe i'm not aware of them maybe i don't have no idea that people think that she's trans i don't have no idea because i only see her again i don't watch tennis i only i'm assuming virgil probably doesn't watch sit there and watch his four matches of tennis he probably sees stuff online sees what she represents um catches something here and there and for the most part you're just like wow i can admire that person same thing with lebron james right i can just admire him from afar and say wow this guy's an amazing athlete when i dig deep a bit deeper so i find out oh that lakers fans don't like him now because they think that he went there for a cash grab he went there to maybe um, um solidify his hollywood partnerships and the fact that you know he's out injured lakers didn't make the playoffs he's got the shop thing when you dig deeper you find all these other things but if I'm making a collaboration or I'm making a TV show and I and I hire LeBron James and I'll suddenly get killed on Twitter because people are telling me I'm the one I'm the reason why they're teammate in the championships, I can't I can't take a brief principle for that. I'm why why would I know all that subtext? Why would I know all that um ancillary information? I'm just talking to the person on a business level, on a creative expression level. That's what he basically is doing with with Serena. Now the 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 Michael Jackson thing is another issue. The Michael Jackson thing is probably somewhere is something that he should he should have probably taken more responsibility on Virgil that is and kind of educate himself on what was happening because again I, I'm maybe I'm a little bit more plugged into what's happening in terms of TV development di um, land but the rumblings of a this documentary Michael Jackson documentary coming out that's going to really expose Michael Jackson was around for ages right we found out that this documentary I think it was debuted at Sundance there was a standing ovation people were crying some people walked out we knew it was going to be a big deal right we were aware that this documentary was going to maybe um, further the narrative that Michael Jackson allegedly um, was molesting children right so it would have been in his interest to find that out or somebody within his team to be aware of, hey, we might need to put a lid on this collection because it, there could be some a storm brewing. He didn't. And then, you know, whatever happened, happened. It got taken off the shelves. It's not in production anymore. Huge waste of time, money wasted. Cool. But with the Serena thing, like no one, I don't know anyone that knew about these transgender allegations. Did you? I know I didn't. I understand that you want to have 
also for shock value, but I just didn't think I was wise. So now, more recently, it has come out today that there was this controversial post that he made on Instagram where he was showing this photo of his staff for his grand off white, and there was no black people whatsoever. Now, I'm sure some of y'all are going to say, oh, there's not a lot of black people in Italy, but how it works with a lot of these fashion designers and interns, etc., is that they pick them from around the world. You what are you talking about, mate? Have you been to, have you, do you, do you know how much this lady doesn't know jack shit? Do you know how much an intern makes? Do you know if they even get paid? Do you think they're going to be flying out interns from fucking London, from Dawson, <laughs> from Brixton, black girls from Peckham to go and, and work in a Milan fashion house somewhere in the middle of Italy where you might need to speak the language? Do you honestly think that's going to happen? Do you think girls actually want to do it themselves? Really? For real? Again, it's just absolutes, right? These these sweeping conclusions about something that you have no idea about. There's a lot of nuance to these things. And again, it does a real disservice to the people that are on the screen. How, like, that's the thing I hate about wokeism, right? Or woke people for some reason, right? They, in order to kind of um, further their message, um, you know, in order to kind of further their agenda, it's at the detriment of somebody else, right? Now, these innocent young ladies who are just doing the best they can, working in a fashion company, trying to make ends meet and i've been dragged on online right their name's been tarnished i'm sure there's some psycho that's out there that try to find who they are trying to see if they're tagged flood their comments with bullshit that's what they're doing right and they're only trying to do their job so in order to kind of prop up or further the conversation of diversity in the workplace it's at the detriment of somebody else that's actually working in that position now they get fucked off that's why i'm not a fan of affirmative action because some way or the other, it's just going to cause resentment. If you're saying, okay, we're going to commit to hiring five black people. It's like, what the fuck is that? Why don't you just open it up and say, we're going to commit to having, an, the, having, having a platform where we allow five people from disenfranchised, maybe low socioeconomic backgrounds, maybe from an area in the country that specifically doesn't have a high number of people that are going on to further education. That might be pretty cool, right? You just look at the map, you think, okay, who, wh which borough of London has the lowest uh, rate of people going to university? Okay, cool, boom, there. We're going to do an initiative where we are allowing kids from Newham, we're allowing five, we'll have five slots for kids from Newham to get into um, Oxford. You don't lower the entry requirements, you just allow them to take the test. That's all you do. Don't look, don't give them special disinvitation. You just say, we're going to allow five of you to take the test. If you get in, you get in. If you don't, those spaces roll over to next year. Instead of saying, we're going to hire five and we're going to bring down the entry requirements. Then what happens when that person comes into the class? They're not the level of everyone else in the class. There's resentment there for the people that are in the class because that person maybe is holding them back. The person that's in the class coming from a different area or who already has weird you know, um, senses of self or how they look at themselves anyway in general. They're not the most self-confident person out there. That's why maybe they might act out in certain ways, then starts feeling even worse about themselves. It's just like, what is this, man? Everyone's suffering. You don't just have to pick a fashion designer or whatever staff member that is directly from Italy. Just like he's from Rockford, Illinois. What is this guy sure talking about? All over the freaking world. They get these people's planes paid. So you're telling me, right, if there's a Starbucks in a predominantly white area and they've only got white staff there, would they have to fly in people from different backgrounds in order to make you happy? Really? It was like, I remember one fan, I think in a Game of Thrones press junket or one of those kind of Q&A things, they asked George R. George R. R. Martin about, I forgot what thing it was, something about the extras not being black or something. And I think he mentioned like, you know, yeah, we filmed it, I don't know, somewhere in the middle of Spain, somewhere in Ireland, somewhere in Croatia. We just put out an open casting call for extras and whoever turned up got the job. There, it was like where we were happened to be places where there were predominantly loads of white people there. So what is he meant to do? Fly extras in from other places of the world to go and do it? No, extras already get paid the lowest. They're already the lowest rung. They're already the, they're already the lowest paid on the ladder of people that get paid anyway. Like, <sighs> before and they ship them out. But in this case, it's like he specifically hired whites to work beside, and here's why: he has a white wife. He and his wife have two children. This way it gets a little bit nasty and I'm not going to really play all of this, but she gets, she starts talking about the family, not being an ally. He has a white wife. It's like, you know, it's a bit disgusting after this, but in general, you know, um, she goes on and on and on, basically bashing Virgil saying he's not an ally. And it's just, again, it's just, it's bizarre land because for me, I think actually speak louder than words. He's given loads of opportunity to those people who are, you know, who look like him. He didn't have to do that. 
I think in this day and age where most people are very um, closed and don't really reveal or pass down or pass back the ladder so I'll be able to get up with, right? There's that famine thinking, the whole Jay-Z crabs in a barrel freestyle from the um, um, from the B-Sides concert comes to mind. Most people don't do that, right? Most people got... It's like, what, what, it's, why, it's why people make such a big deal about people like Rick Ross, people like DJ Khaled and stuff, right? People make a big deal about someone like that because Khaled, for the most part, shouts out every producer who co-produces his track, right? He shouts them out. He gives them credits on albums. Rick Ross is probably the the archetype of a good artist label boss, right? He's always promoting his artist music without them asking. He, uh, he he comes on video shoots. He gives them verses. He advises on business ideas. He's ever present. He stands next to them all the time, which is really important in hip hop. So no one, people make a big deal out those kind of people because for the most part, people don't do that, right? They look after their own self interest. Maybe it's the way we're wired. Maybe it's because the fact that you know when you get to that position, the the adulation and hype gets your head, and you you know get a bit dizzy. And all of a sudden, you know, everyone around you doesn't really make any sense. But for the most part, I actually speak louder than words. Virgil's consistently, consistently throughout his entire career, surrounded himself with people better than him, right? People that he could kind of lift up, learn from, get better than, uh, meet at that level, wherever maybe He's always surrounded himself with great, talented people and shout them out. His Instagram stories is littered with people that he's met along his journey, collaborators, friends, people he's working on projects with. And guess what? They're all tagged. In Instagram, social media world where you care about those kind of things, that's really important. He's tagging you in the things that you do. He's reaching out directly via direct message for you to come and shoot his, um, um, I don't know, to kind of shoot the behind the scenes footage for his lookbook. He's flying you out to just sit, just hang around and catch a vibe when he's designing his design studio. Like loads of things that people don't have to do. He's doing it all the time, consistently. And the fact that maybe he might have one place, one area in his life where it might not be to your liking is the issue. Like, come on. And again, it goes back to the idea of like, if you don't like what he's doing, guess what? Do it yourself. Launch your own clothing company. Hire only people from a certain background. Further that conversation. And then, you know, do that that way. And then maybe you might set an example. Or maybe not. Maybe that's your role to play. Maybe his role is different. It just it just seems really weird that people get the have the the cheek or the guts or the nerve to tell somebody else how they should do life. Like it's like what the fuck are you to tell me how to do anything? It's my life. I'll do it. I'll do it as I please. Bizarre, bizarre. But anyway, what do I know? <laughs>